You know, I realize you may be going through a very difficult time right now in life. There's a lot of people really struggling, and you may be one of those people really hurting, really struggling. But more important than me realizing that, God knows it. God knows right where you're at, and He cares for you. God loves you. He wants to help you. This is your day to get help. God wants to help you through His Son, Jesus, set you free, stand you up, strengthen you, and fill you with His Holy Spirit, fill you with joy and peace. Isn't that good news? Let's just welcome the Holy Spirit right now and ask Him for His help. Precious Holy Spirit, we need you. Lord, we need you. We are your family, God, and we need your help. The word says for us to cry unto God, to ask you for help. So we're asking, Lord, right now, help us, strengthen us. My dear brother and my dear sister, Lord, help them, heal them, strengthen them. Lord, give them joy and peace. Renew their mind. Set their mind on things above, on hope, on faith, on life. You can do that, Father. And right now we invite you to do that. And we believe you're doing it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be with you. We begin a new series right now called True Grit. You might even say, Stephen, you're, you're dressed just a little bit different. Well, I had to get the right fit to preach on True Grit, right? just to kind of help get me in the mood and get you in the mood. We're talking about true grit today, and I'm so excited about launching this new series. I'm so excited about talking about true grit because I really believe that this is going to be a life-changing message for you, a life-changing message for your, it could be your marriage, for your family, your career, your business, even just for you emotionally and mentally in the midst of difficulty and hard circumstances. This is God speaking to you and me and talking and setting our focus on true grit. Did you hear that? What was that little sound there? True grit. Isn't that interesting? You know what? This, when I drill down on this for you, I want you to understand this is really about you never giving up. Second Peter um, chapter 1 verse 5 says this, add to your faith virtue. Now, that's a very interesting word. It's a beautiful word, but, you know, some call it moral energy. Some interpret it as character, diligence, but it's true grit. Make no mistake, it's true grit. Add to your faith virtue, true grit. Did you know that talent is common? That's right. Talent is not really the big deal everyone makes it out to be. You know, I've met people with amazing musical talent that you'll never hear of, you'll never hear their record. They're doomed to obscurity, not because they aren't ridiculously talented. They may have perfect pitch. So why will you never hear of them? It's the refusal to develop true grit, tenacity, consistency, the willingness to uncover the gift and make it proficient in their life. What's rare is when someone takes raw talent and invests it and makes it into something that turns it into the big deal that you and I perceive it to be. It could be an athletic ability. It could be intellect. It could be creativity. You must work the talent. You've got to put it to work. You've got to invest it. So if you're thinking, well, if only I was smarter, Pastor Stephen, if only I had more talent, if only I was just stronger, if only I was just better looking, maybe if I was better connected. Oh, Pastor Stephen, if only I was younger, if only I was older and more mature, if only I was more, more experienced, more respected, maybe if I was just wealthier, if, maybe if I was living in a better city or a better town or a better place, a nicer house. If only I had more kids. If only I didn't have any kids. If only I was married. If only I was not married. Oh, if you've ever caught yourself thinking like this over and over and asking yourself these kind of questions and if this message is for you. If you've thought like that, this message is for you. If you're feeling discouraged right now and feeling like your life doesn't amount to anything, this message is is for you. True grit. Oh yes, true grit. 
It's about never giving up, but it's about getting back up. It's about never giving up, but it's about getting back up. See, infatuation is common. Endurance is uncommon. You know, many people became infatuated with Jesus' message. They became infatuated with Jesus. The crowds did. They were like, oh my goodness, he's amazing. And oh, the long hair. I wonder where he gets his sandals. They became infatuated with Jesus. Like, oh, he's just so cool. He says things that are different. I've never heard anybody speak with authority like that. He, they became infatuated with the master. The crowds loved him. But, you know, the crowds are fickle. The same crowds that loved him were the same crowds that later were chanting, crucify him, kill him, murder him. Crowds are fickle. Infatuation is common. But my friend, endurance is uncommon. So what do I really mean by that? Look, many people become infatuated. They become enthused with an idea. But few have endurance to see it through. Many people are interested in love because they feel something. Oh, you know, when I saw you across the room, I just, I felt something. When we talked, I just felt something. But few have what it takes to endure to where love really counts. You know, love expresses itself majorly when it costs something. You know, you see love when you see a, a wonderful older couple who've been together for many, many years and she's walking into the hospital to visit him in a hospital room and just the tenderness, the love, the consistency, the persistency to show up. That's true grit. I've, I've had many people tell me that they even like me, believe it or not. And when I tell them, when I tell them what they hear, want to hear, they say, oh, I love that message. I, I like what you said today. When I'm telling them what they want to hear, they tend to kind of like me. But the moment I tell them what they need to hear, <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the, the enthusiasm tends to thin out very paper thin because endurance is rare. Enthusiasm, that's pretty common. Endurance, that's rare. And until you realize you need it, you don't prioritize it. And of course, we're talking about grit. Until you realize you need grit, you don't prioritize grit, right? You may say, well, it, it, it's hopeless, Pastor Stephen. It's just hopeless because I'm one of those people, I don't have a lot of endurance. I just don't seem to have that grit you're talking about. Well, I've got good news for you, friend. God wants to help you by giving you his precious, amazing Holy Spirit. Jesus even said to the disciples, the Holy Spirit will help you. See, Jesus knew we needed help. Even the disciples, remember, after Jesus told them they needed the Holy Spirit to help them, they actually denied Jesus. They, they denied him. They all forsook him when he went to the cross. It's proof that we need Jesus. We need his precious Holy Spirit to help us and to give us boldness. Peter, remember, he denied Jesus three times that night before Jesus was crucified because he was so fearful, because he was the peer pressure got to him. And he just, I don't know that guy. I just don't know him. But the moment Peter got filled with the Holy Spirit, he was bold. He told a crowd of thousands of people that were responsible for crucifying Jesus. He said, you crucified the Son of God, the Savior. Suddenly a boldness came on him. Why? Because we need the Holy Spirit to give us that endurance, that true grit, that boldness. That's right, my friend. God wants to make the weak strong. Not in themselves, not in myself. But in Christ Jesus, we get to be strong. John Irving is a famous American-Canadian novelist, screenwriter with critical acclaim after achieving international success with works that I know you've probably heard, The Cider House Rules, famous movie, and The World According to Garp. What many people don't know about John and about this best-selling storyteller with all kinds of awards for his work is this, it does not come natural for him. He works the grit factor. Irving said this 
about his writing in his early days. He said, I began to take my lack of talent seriously. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Two thirds of his fellow students growing up did better than him at school. He averaged a C minus in English class. He needed to stay in school an extra year to get enough credits to graduate. His teachers actually labeled him lazy and stupid. Talk about great self-esteem experts, right? Nothing like authorities in your life to call you lazy and stupid. Now, what these short-sighted teachers did not understand was that John Irving was dyslexic. He said, I was an underdog. If my classmates could read a history assignment in an hour, he said, it took me at least two or three hours. Irving, to this day, has to read slowly with his finger on every sentence. To this day, that's how he reads. What John Irving learned in not giving up was that in doing something over and over and over again, it became almost second nature to him. He learned that success wasn't achieved overnight, but by never giving up, Irving rewrites draft after draft of his novels over and over. This true life story of worldwide acclaim is a story of grit, never giving up grit. You see, isn't it interesting that when Irving talks about his writing ability, he doesn't talk about his gift or his talents on writing, but rather he speaks of his stamina and tenacity to go over something again and again and again. He says, rewriting, this is a direct quote, rewriting is what I do best. I spend more time revising than writing. You see, my friend, that's grit. Yes, there's talent. Talent is beautiful. It's God-given. It's wonderful. It's wonderful that we would have talents, but, but there's gifting and there's talent, but then there's the genius in the grit, the tenacity, the willingness to not let go. The rare quality is in the true grit. You see, talent is really common. True grit is the uncommon thing. It's the uncommon thing that makes a marriage uncommon and beautiful and filled with love, that makes a family uncommon. It's the true grit. You know, I've spoken to people who say they've prayed once about something and didn't feel like God answered the way they wanted, so they just gave up. They gave up on themselves and they gave up on God. True grit is a part of life and faith. It's necessary to living life and laying hold of what you hope for. You can't give up on breakfast just because you had it yesterday. You can't give up on love just because somebody didn't love you back or return your kindness. You can't give up on yourself just because you failed. Maybe you fell, you got sick, or you sinned. Never, ever give up. What you're not understanding is that the gold, my, my friend, the gold is often found in the mud, in the muck, in the dirty stuff, in the overburden of life. The gold is often found in that obscurity. Grit isn't optional. It's mandatory. Let's turn to God's word and hear a little bit of a word out of encouragement on grit. James 1, starting at verse 2 through to 4. Consider it wholly joyful, my brethren, whenever you encounter trials or fall into various temptations. Be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith bring out endurance and patience. Now that's called true grit. But let endurance and steadfastness and patience have full play and do a thorough work so that you may be perfectly and fully developed with no defects, lacking in nothing. Praise God. This is what you've wanted. This is what you want. This is the formula for being fully developed, lacking nothing. What is God saying here to us through James? He's saying grit is part of you being perfectly and fully developed. Maybe you've got some form of spiritual dyslexia. Are you going to just give up and abandon God's ridiculous blessings for your life? God uses our challenges to try our faith, which acts like a file or sandpaper, right? Eliminating the junk, eliminating the immaturity and the selfishness. Because, you know, these are all things that are going to hurt your life in the long run. Do you want to go through life with a spiritual toxin in your soul that has the potential to destroy your future, your family, your dreams, your business? 
Look, just like John Irving discovered that going over and over something, exercising grit, it helped him. It helped him overcome and arrive at greatness. One of the greatest authors of all time. God wants to go over and over you with his truth because we just read the, the word of God says this, that he wants you lacking in nothing. Quote, lacking in nothing. That's God's word for you. That's not me speaking over you. That's God's plan and will for your life to be lacking in nothing, according to James. Developing your faith in God is a little bit like getting in physical shape. Add some patience, some virtue, some tenacity to your faith is what I call getting some true grit, spiritual grit. God has great plans for your life, amazing things for your life, but you're going to need, this is mandatory, we talked about this, you are going to need to have grit, my friend. Faith just won't let go when you got grit. Did you know that you need grit to overcome rejection? Rejection is one of the number one causes of people just giving up, just, I can't take it anymore, just letting go, just giving up. Did you know Jesus had to overcome rejection? That's right. Jesus, the most amazing person in all of eternity, who was perfect in every way, was rejected by the very people that he came to save and that he loved. Jesus was rejected for you. Jesus was rejected for me. I love the book of Isaiah that talks about Jesus, who did not turn his face away from the shame and the spitting the rejection, but he bore it for you and me all the way to the cross that he could pay the price for our rejection. My friend, it just doubles down on the, the blessing of the Holy Spirit filling you and giving you the endurance, the grit to tenaciously see your faith through to that hope, that reward that God has for you. More than likely, you know what it feels like to be rejected. I'm sure you do. True grit is the soul medicine, the S-O-U-L, soul medicine to remedy rejection. Don't give up. You fall, but don't give up. Look, you may cry, but I'm telling you, don't give up. Sometimes rejection feels like you're failing. There may even have been a leader, an authority, Somebody who's even in a, a, a pastor, a teacher, somebody who's called you stupid, made you feel like you failed, but you must get back up again and overcome rejection. It's an opportunity to grow past the pain. Move forward. Do not let rejection call the shots in your life. I'm telling you, my friend, do not let rejection call the shots on your destiny and on your future because rejection is a liar. Don't let it call the shots in your life. You've got to keep your eyes on a great God who has great plans for you. Adversity is part of the package of life, but you can do this. True grit helps you not lose heart. Remember, in Proverbs 4, verse 23, we're warned to guard our heart above all things. That's what the Bible says. And I talk to so many people who've lost their heart in situations because they weren't prepared with the guard of peace and true grit to guard their heart. Look at Galatians 6, 9. And let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint and acting nobly and doing right for in due time and at the appointed season, we're going to reap. Oh, that's good. We're going to reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. My friend, don't lose heart. In other words, don't quit. Get some grit, right? Get some true grit, but don't quit. I don't know much about basketball, but I do know this. Michael Jordan, he's a famous, famous icon in the world of basketball, professional basketball. Did you know that he was cut from his high school basketball team? Can you imagine that? But failure only inspired Michael to work harder and harder. Here's what Michael in his own words says about failing. He said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. He said, I have lost almost 300 games. He said, on 26 occasions, I've been entrusted to take the game-winning shot, and I missed. I have failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. Wow. 
See, notice this. Jordan is not championing talent. He's not denying his failures either. He's talking about his unwillingness to give up. He's saying, I'm not a give upper. God's telling you and me, don't be a give upper. Stop quitting on you. Stop, stop quitting on God. Stop believing that you can't. Quit making a doctrine out of your failures. I know organizations and churches even that make a doctrine out of their failure. Champions fail, but they don't quit. They get up because they know that winning isn't about talent. It's not about beauty. It's not about perfection. It's about grit. Pure, unstoppable, true grit. Proverbs 24, 16. For a righteous man falls seven times and rises again. Let me say it another way. For a righteous woman falls seven times and rises again. Remember, righteousness comes from God. And so you and I, we can source grit from God, but do it. We've got to do it. It's not up to God. It's up to us to do it. You know, God's put that resurrection spirit in us by the by the gifting of Christ in us, so when we fall, we still have a choice. We can just lay there or we can say, you know what? You know, I failed, but I'm going to get back up again. You know, I sinned, but I'm going to get back up again. You know what? I, I, I really shouldn't have said what I said, but I'm going to get back up again. You know what? I, I made a mistake, but I'm going to get back up again. You know what? I, I, I lost out here, but I'm going to get back up again. You have got to decide that you're going to surrender to God's plan for your life by getting back up again. The greatest of winners in life know what it's like to have to get back up again. That's you. You can do this. My friend, life is not a lottery. The world wants us to believe that lie. It's not a lottery. Even religion tells you to pray like you're rolling some dice, hoping to see if your lucky numbers come up. Oh, oh Jesus, maybe this is my lucky day. Come on. Oh, maybe next time, next Sunday. Oh, come on. It's not the truth. It's not the way it works. It's a lie. Everyone fails. Everyone falls. But faith in God means you get up again. You don't quit because you got grit, right? No one wanted to hire Walt Disney as an artist. Did you know that? He couldn't seem to get hired anywhere, so his brother did him a favor and got him a temporary job. Walt's first animation studio went bankrupt. He went on to co-found the Walt Disney Company, which in 2017 had over $50 billion in revenue. You can't quit. You can't give up on what God has hidden inside your life. Steven Spielberg, famous movie producer was rejected both times he applied to film school at the University of Southern California. As you know, he did Indiana Jones movies, he did Jurassic Park, Jaws, Schindler's List, The Color Purple, um, Saving Private Ryan, just to name a few. My friend, grit. You've got to have grit. Don't quit. You got to have grit. What about Oprah Winfrey? She was fired from her job co-anchoring the 6 p.m. news in Baltimore. Something about her just not being the right fit. Oprah overcame childhood sexual abuse to become a successful media star. She hosted the highest ranked TV show of, of its kind in history and is an incredible philanthropist. Getting involved in other people's stories to help them, it's not about talent. It's not about looks. It's not about natural ability. It's all about grit. I got to read it to you again. Galatians 6, 9, God's word. Come on, let's get back to God's word and let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right for in due time and at the appointed season, we shall reap. If we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint, it doesn't say we shall reap if you're good looking enough and if you're young enough and if you're talented enough and if, you know, you, you can do this, you know, it doesn't say that. If you're tall enough, you will reap. It doesn't say that. It says you will reap if you do not loosen, relax your courage and faint. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up with a calculated grit. When I talk about true grit, I wanna just define it a little deeper here now, just as we're closing. Never give up with a calculated grit. 
here's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about running into the same brick wall over and over and over and over and completely void of wisdom and and relying just on brute, random grit, but disrespecting all pursuit of knowledge. I'm not talking about that kind of grit. That's that's grit that's basically just borderline stupidity. You know, Proverbs 12 verse 1 says this, he who hates reproof and correction is just plain stupid. See, that's uncalibrated grit. It takes grit to get wisdom, to pursue understanding, to pursue knowledge. You've got to pursue the good stuff that helps calibrate your grit. And I think this story um, really says what I'm talking about here and talking about calibrated grit. Um, There was a man back in the gold rush days, a man named R.U. Darby. R.U. Darby and his uncle traveled west during those gold rush days after taking loans out to get equipment to do some mining and it looked like they had the richest gold strike in Colorado. They hit a little bit of gold and just enough to pay off all of their equipment but then they lost the vein and they were soon drilling and drilling and drilling but all to no avail. They had come to the end of their rainbow so to speak. No pot of gold either, right? So something very interesting, I want you to see this, happened right here at this point. They sold all of their mining equipment to a junk man for a few hundred bucks. The junk man, he just had this feeling, just an an intuition. So what did he do? He, He didn't keep drilling. He hired a mining engineer to look over the mine and run some calculations. The engineer advised that the project had failed because... The previous owners, the Darbys, were not familiar with the fault lines. Oh, this gets interesting. Come with me here. The engineer's calculation showed that the gold vein could not be found because they had miscalculated based on not realizing that there were fault lines. But when he did his measurements, he found out that because of the fault lines and recalibrating his measurements, he found that they could pick up the gold vein with just moving over three feet from where the Darbys had stopped drilling. Yeah, you heard me right. Three feet, three feet, 36 inches from where the Darbys had stopped drilling. This is exactly where they found it. They drilled the three feet, they found the gold vein, and the junk man became overnight very, very, very wealthy because he didn't give up on the mine, but adjusted his persistence to uncover the treasure someone else had already given up on. Look, this story is both a warning on the failure of giving up, and it's also an encouragement on the prize of calculated grit. Three feet. Three feet. Are you willing to give up on your future, your marriage, your dreams, your family, because of three feet? Really? Are you willing to give up on your future, your dreams, because of three feet, because you don't have a calculated grit? Darby could have drilled another 100 feet and still come up empty because it's not just about the effort of three more feet. It's about direction. It's about calibration, calculation. It's about advisement, revision, correction. Are you okay with correction? Or are you insisting on being confirmed? Is it all about confirmation or is it correction? Do you want results or do you just want affirmation? You see, you've heard me quote Hebrews 12 verse 6 where it says that God corrects those he loves. And if you don't have correction, then you're really really not his child. Why, my friend, are you willing to give up on you? God hasn't given up on you. Don't you give up on you. I get it that you're discouraged. I know about that. I've been very discouraged. Digging, drilling, working, toiling, and feeling like you're getting nowhere. But that's not God's plan for your life. God is the wonderful, amazing engineer of all life. So why wouldn't you ask him, where the fault lines are, right? Where should I drill God? I'm not interested in drilling another 100 feet if not necessary. I just want to do the three foot thing, right? God, which way do I go? Steer and guide my grit. If you're weak and at the place where you just 
You have no strength or grit left. That's okay. I know these are difficult times, but God is an expert at difficult times. God is truly an expert at your difficult times. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Let Jesus be your strength right now. He's saying to you, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Come to me, all you that have a need for true grit. I'll put my spirit in you. I'll put my strength in you. I'm going to help you get back up again. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. This is such good news. Jesus, who triumphed over the cross, being your personal source of true grit. When a sponge is squeezed, it soaks up whatever it's around. If you're being squeezed like you've never been squeezed before, my friend, draw near to God and soak up, soak up his amazing life. You're being squeezed anyway. You might as well be in the presence of God and soak up his life, right? Do you want that amazing life of Jesus in you? Only you can authorize God to save you. Only you. I can't do it for you. Nobody else can. Only you. Only you have the delegated authority right now to say yes to Jesus and start this awesome journey. Pray this prayer with me and invite Jesus into your life. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm being squeezed right now. These are difficult times. I need your help. Forgive me of all my sins. You died on the cross for me. You overcame death and the grave for me. Be the Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Direct my steps. Give me your overcoming nature. In your name, Jesus. Amen.